Testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two. All right, good. Let's go. Let's do it. We want to welcome you tonight to the Wednesday night prayer service and Bible study here at uh, Southside Baptist Church in Columbia, uh, Sumter, Columbia, Sumter. I don't even know where I'm at. And uh, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, just, just to make a note before we get in our Bible study now. Uh, we need to remember that everything now is live. Uh, this is going out live uh, every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. It'll be live Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock live. Sunday nights at 6 o'clock. It'll be out there live on YouTube and uh, Facebook. So we encourage you to watch. Uh, Pray that God will bless you to our folks at uh, Southside that are not able to be with us tonight on our Wednesday night service. Uh, we miss you, and uh, I pray you're all doing well, and uh, thank for the, the ones that have come tonight. We want to begin by having uh, a word of prayer, uh, so would you bow with us as we pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, dear God, uh, for the privilege in the middle of the week to come into your house. And God, uh, you know, it's, it's, these are long weeks, hard weeks. And God, we just kind of sometimes just need to be together. And we just need to meet with you and, and talk about you and talk about your word. And God, it's kind of a the uplifting uh, that takes us through the rest of the week until Sunday. And I thank you for those that have come uh, to church tonight to fellowship and to worship together. I thank you, God, for those that are watching uh, uh, out there uh, live on the YouTube and Facebook and pray, God, uh, that you'll speak to them and bless them uh, uh, tonight as, as we study your word together. Father, we would uh, be amiss if we didn't thank you for every blessing that you give us in life, that God, uh, our health, our strength, God, we pray for the sick. God, we pray for those that are uh, not doing well. Lord, I especially tonight uh, pray for Miss Edith Bates and uh, her family, God, that you will be with them. Father, uh, and others that we just right now prefer not to call their name, but God, all the others, the Brown family, uh, that you would just be with them, God. Uh, continue to bless those that are going through some very difficult times right at, at this moment. So, Lord, be with us now. We pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to come on us as we begin to continue our study on Wednesday night of how to have that Christian walk with God using the Apostle Paul as our example. So, God, bless us now. May you be honored in what we do. For it's in Christ's name that we do humbly pray. Amen. 
<clears throat> All right, if you have your Bibles, if, you know we're in the book of Acts. We've been talking about how we live and walk that Christian walk. How we please God with what we do. And we're using the example of the Apostle Paul. And Paul was no different in many ways than a lot of us. Paul was not in the church. He did not like the church. Uh, matter of fact, he was doing everything he could to destroy the church until we talked about his salvation experience on that Damascus road. And we talked about how immediately after God restored his eyesight that he began to go and to preach. And then we talked about how he had this. This is where we had kind of left off with the story how he had kind of, he'd had good success, a lot of people being saved, and he went to the big church, the mother church, which was uh, in Jerusalem, and the rest of the disciples or apostles did not want to accept him as one of them and what he'd done, and so they send him away to preach somewhere else, send him to Samaria to a desert place, to preach at because they did not exactly trust him because of his background, because of what they'd heard about him, of the things that he'd done to destroy the church and all. And so there was at this point in time in, in Paul's life a lot of distrust among the Christian leadership of the church that day. Now, we're no different than that today. You know... Uh, there's just some people that we may not trust as much as we do others. Well, this was Paul. So what has happened is this. Paul has gone. A lot of things transcend. And, and one thing that I noticed uh, that I kind of picked up on as I was going over this a little bit today was that when God's got a work to do, a specific work, God's always got somebody to do it. God's always got someone to do the job that he needs to have done. And so, and when God gets it in order, then the job gets done. And sometimes God wouldn't do it. You see, this is the thing that God knew that needed to be done. And you read it when you study the life as we do of Paul. He needed for this word here to be carried into the world. Now, if you remember, when we got here, the other disciples were not willing to do that. You remember, they only cared about whether the Jews were saved, because that's what they all were. Even Paul was one. And remember the last time we met, or I preached, we didn't meet, but I, but I talked about Cornelius had a vision, Peter was at home that had a vision, Cornelius was a Gentile, Peter did not care much whether the Gentiles got saved, but while he was having a vision, and, and God gave a great word to Peter, and the, and the word that he gave to Peter was what? Anything that I have made is not unclean. About that time they knocked on his door, and it was Cornelius' people, and he went to Cornelius' house, which was a Gentile house, and he spoke to them there, people got saved, the Holy Spirit of God came down in that place, and there was a great awakening of the Apostle Peter concerning the Gentiles that he'd never cared much about before. And so now the gospel is about to move in a new direction. We're about to learn, for God so loved the world, that everybody deserves the right to know Jesus. Everybody. Not just Jews, Gentiles, but you got to be one of the two, but everybody needs Jesus. And so that's where we left off <clears> then. <throat> and so Paul has been out preaching. Look at chapter 11 in the book of Acts. This is where we left off. Now, under, what you need to understand is now, Paul's been gone about three years now. Remember, they, they, they made him leave Jerusalem because they didn't trust him. And so for three years, he's just been out in the regions uh, uh, just preaching. Not going back to Jerusalem, but he's been preaching. It says, And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard 
that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Now remember what I told you the primary need was. The word of God. That they had received it. Now, there's a difference there. It did not say that they had heard the word of God. What did it say? They received the word of God. There's a lot of people that hear and have heard and will hear the word of God that will never go to heaven. But when you receive it and you believe it, then you trust Christ as your Savior, you can go. It says that as Paul was out there preaching, that the people received his message, received what he had to say. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. So here you got Paul, he's down there preaching and people's getting saved everywhere. Well, back in the big church in Jerusalem, word travels. Let me tell you something. Word travels fast whether you're doing good or whether you're doing bad. You know that. I, I tell you this all the time. Every church has a reputation. Uh, you, if you come to something, they'll say, well, that's a dead church, that's a live church, that's a good church, that's a bad church. Them people will love you. Those people won't love you. Uh, you know, you, you, everybody knows something. If I call a church's name, then somebody can say something about that church, right? It's just the way it is. Well, word had gotten back to Jerusalem about Peter and Cornelius. Now, understand, this did not sit well with James and John, who were the leaders of the church, that he had taken and had gone into the home of a Gentile that they did not care whether they got saved or not. And he had spent time there, had preached there, they had got saved and had got baptized and word gets back to the main church of what Peter had done and the people at the church were angry of what he'd done, that he had gone into the house, saying, in verse 3, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, and didst eat with them. Peter, you ever know sometimes it don't matter who you are, if you set the wrong people off, or kick the wrong people off, that think they run things, they'll get on you. Now understand where Peter had come from. Up until this point throughout the, uh, when God created the church in that upper room, who had been leading the church? Peter had. Who was the one that preached and the thousands were saved? Who was the preacher that was preaching when God added to the church daily such as be saved? Peter was. Who was the man that had got locked up in jail had to be prayed because of preaching the gospel? Peter. He was the leader. But when you don't do things sometimes the way people think you ought to do, then you make the wrong people mad at you and they can really try to make life tough. So they come back and find out about what Peter done and how he'd gone into the house of Cornelius and even worse than that, had eaten a, a meal with him. The big church is upset with him that he eat with him. But now, now you know I love Peter. I, you know, one of these days, if I live long enough and the Lord don't call us home, I, I've got to study on Peter. Peter's my favorite disciple. My favorite. Now, so they get on Peter about this. You ought not to have done that. You ought not to have went into this man's house. You, you know we don't believe in doing that kind of stuff. Well, you got to understand something. Peter is going to say 
And even sometimes before his mind gets in gear, his mouth gets in gear. That's Peter's trouble, right? But this time, something's changed. It says in the Bible that Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them saved. Now, when it says that Peter rehearsed it to them, that means Peter said, hold on a minute, fellas. Let me give you the whole story here. You know, we've been together, but I'm going to tell you something. God gave me a special vision, and I obeyed God, and I did what God did. And folks, you don't ever have to back up for, for anybody from doing what God tells you to do. You don't ever have to back up for anything you say if God tells you to say it. And in other words, that's kind of what Peter does here. He says, let me tell you what happened. And instead of getting on me for doing that, you ought to be rejoicing in the fact that people were saved and people were on the way to heaven because I had a vision, Cornelius had a vision, his whole household saved and on the way to heaven. And y'all want to call me here to get on what God has called me to do and doing God's will. See, Peter, for most of his life, was never one to back down, to let a group tell him what to do when he believed he was in the will of God. Now, sometimes he spoke when he ought not to, and we all do that sometimes. We all, you know, most people got a little bit of Peter in them, and it gets them in a little trouble sometimes, but, uh, you know, that's life. Sometimes we say things we wish we hadn't said. I ain't never done that, but um, uh, I know people that have. And it uh, gets you in a little bit of trouble sometimes, Tom, with that. So that's what happened. I'm not going to go, go through all that. And he tells them the story. And I, I done told you the story. I told you that last time. So I ain't going through that again. So let's just jump down to verse 17 now. Remember, he's explaining to the church leaders about, about this. He says, For as much, so much then, as God gave them the like gift as he did us. He said, you need to understand. God gave them the same thing that He gave me. And what did, what did Peter call it? A gift. Did you notice that in there? He gave them the same gift that He gave us. You see, you understand salvation is a gift of God. Peter's saying, you remember when you got saved? They might not have got exactly saved the same way you did, but they got saved by the same God that saved you. There's only one God, one Holy Spirit, one salvation, one way to heaven. And he said that God gave them the same gift that you fellows have got, and y'all are here complaining about it. You know who ought to complain less than anybody in the world? That's church people have been saved. People's on the way to heaven and God's forgiven their sin and blessed them and, 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 you, and, and they won't walk around and gripe and complain about everything. Hey, what you got to complain about? You're a child of the king. Just thank God you got the same gift I got and I got what you got. There's no difference between that. That's what the... He says, did you know what happened? I was in the house and the Spirit of God came down. God saved those people the same way He saved me. They're on the way to glory. He said he gave them the same gift for those that believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the key. When you talk about salvation, you always got to talk about believing. I was talking to a fellow yesterday. I was out cutting grass and he come and stopped me. I hate when I'm doing the work in my yard and somebody comes and stops me from work. Especially when it's 113 degrees out there. And he got to talking about the Bible. And he says this or that the other about the Bible. And I don't mind talking about... The, I forget I'm on TV. He might be watching this thing. 
Sorry. <laughs> I got to get used to this live stuff. <laughs> we can't cut this out like them TV people do. So now when I go home, he goes like, I heard about what you said me in church the other day. So uh, I got to try to do better. Remember that. But it don't matter. Because we were talking about different denominations. I said, it don't matter what denomination you are. I said, God does not care if you're a Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, Pentecostal, Jehovah Witness, whatever you are. The main thing is, that what did he say? That you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and the Savior of the world. If you do not believe that, then you cannot go to heaven. That's what we were talking about. And I said, I believe that. I said, I believe there are all those people going to have some people go to heaven. Because in heaven, you not go go up there and see the First Baptist Church. You not go see on the south side of heaven, South Side Baptist Church. Matter of fact, if you listen to me Sunday night, what did I tell you? There ain't even going to be a church up there. Right? Y'all remember that? It says when they went there, as we were talking on Revelation Sunday night, that there is no temple. So there ain't going to be no place to go to church up there. So there can't be a Baptist, a Methodist, Pentecostal, nothing else. There ain't going to be none of that stuff up there. Because it'll be a place of worship everywhere you go. You can go in Bilo and worship. You can go in Lowe's and worship. You can go in the Piggly Wiggly and worship. Everywhere you go, there's going to be gospel music playing, Brother Jimmy. Everywhere you go, there's going to be a prayer. Oh, an angel might walk by and knock you. Know, that's the way heaven's going to be. I'm telling you. That, that, I, I wish I knew a lot more about it than I did. But anyway, he tells them the story. And he says, they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I could withstand God? So what Peter's saying there is this. What was I supposed to do? And y'all got me down here to ring me over the coals for doing what God told me to do. So should I have listened to you or should I have done what God told me to do? Now I know y'all would have told me not to go there. God told me to go there. To specifically, matter of fact, they sent men to get me to take me to that place right there. So Peter says, how could I withstand God? How could I not do what God told me to do when it was God that spoke to me in a vision with a very direct voice and told me things that I had never thought of before that changed my whole perspective and my whole life. In other words, you know what people are saying? Because we, we ain't had this thing right. Remember how I tell you when I... And I tell you, i got some things I'm going to tell you in the next few weeks as we study that you probably never heard before because I ain't never said them before. Really ain't. Because God showed me something I never thought about. He said... In other words, what he's saying, fellas, we, we ain't been doing this right. We've been worried about whether well, you circumcise not. You can't and you know that that you, you do know that in the writings of the apostle Paul, as we'll talk about later on in our study, that he talked much about false prophets and false preachers that taught that, that the only way you could go to heaven if you were a Gentile was you what? Had to first be circumcised, didn't you? In other words, you move from a Gentile to the Jewish faith, and then you, once you got to the Jewish faith, then you could go on to heaven as a Christian. That was what they had been. That's what they've been teaching. And what Peter was saying was what we had it wrong. God gives them the same gifts He gives me. God saves them the same. They ain't got to become what I want to be saved. Now, do you think that the hierarchy in the church in Jerusalem liked the response that Peter given? Probably not. Because you see, that's what they had taught him to do. That's, he was doing what the, the leadership. 
But they were wrong. And he says, Now when they heard these things, they held their peace. Sometimes, I don't know how many of you is old enough to remember a man named Paul Hart that used to be on the radio. And you used to listen to Paul Harvey and he would tell you something and then he'd say, stay tuned for the rest of the story. Now Peter has challenged the hierarchy of the church. In most churches, the hierarchy will be the ones that come out on top. Because there's more of them than there's of Peter. But something strange happens. See, God, what I'm trying to tell you about all this, God's fixing to do a work like the world has never seen. Peter, in his wildest dream of being a fisherman, never ever dreamed he'd be in this position in life where he'd be before the hierarchy of the of the Jewish religion, having to give an account of his life, give an account of his preaching. He never dreamed he would be put in that. Sometimes when you serve God, you get put in places you never dreamed you'd get put in. Man, I want to tell you something. Brother Lynn can verify this. You had to deal with things sometimes that in your wildest dreams you never thought you'd have to deal with. Peter's talking to the bosses. Let me put it this way, and I've told you this before. He may be talking to a boss, but they aren't the boss. Right? And so after he tells them the story and told them, who am I going to listen to? Am I going to listen to you, or am I going to listen to what God says? Guess what happens? They change their minds. They change their hearts. Peter impacted them. What does it say in that verse? When they heard what Peter had said, these things, they held their peace. They, they did not say, Peter, you shouldn't have done that. You know that's against our rules. We preach to Jews. Uh -uh. They didn't say that. They didn't say we're the leadership. You've got to do what we say do. Because you see what's happening here. God's working in their heart too through an old fisherman. Uneducated. Fished all of his life. And these great leaders of the church now have heard a message. But you got to understand you remember what happened when he went up into Cornelius' house and if you, the story I told you, and it says that the Holy Spirit of God came in down there while he was up there and all them folks got saved. Now it don't say that in the Bible right here. But I believe God was preparing this moment for the church. As I believe that in the times we're living in today, God has prepared a moment for the church. I do. I believe this is a special time. I believe that the Holy Spirit of God came down whatever room, wherever in there they were meeting that injury, wherever they were, I believe all of a sudden when he began to tell the story and they began to listen, the Holy Spirit of heart convicted them and they said, you know what, Peter? You're right. You're right. We've been wrong. I bet Peter said, what? Do what? Peter, you're right. You're right. They held their peace, but then they did what? They glorified God. Now what does the Bible tell us to do as, as the people of God? What does the Bible say to them? What does he say to the preacher? What does he say to everybody in the congregation? Do all that you do for the glory of God. 
And so here is the church and the leadership of that day. You find them finally doing what? Glorifying God is what the church ought to do. Every program, every body, every deacon, every preacher, everybody that sits on a committee, everybody that comes into church to worship, we ought to come here with this one purpose in mind, and that purpose is what? To God be the glory, great things He has done, and we're going to glorify Him, and we're going to give Him the credit for all that gets done in Southside Baptist Church, and to God be the glory. These leaders said they glorified God. Wonder how long it'd been since they'd done that. And because no fisherman told them that. No fisherman. Last thing we'll quit. And they glorified God, and this is what they said. Hath God, no, he's then. That word then is very important there. That means they were in agreement with what he said. After they heard what he said and glorified God, then. See that? Don't leave out the then. This is why it takes me so long to go anywhere and do anything. That's why it took me four and a half years to do John, four and a half years to do Revelation. I was thinking about that today. I have spent half of my life in ministry doing preaching the book of Revelation. I have preached through it five times. It takes me over four years to do it. I've been preaching 41 years. So I have spent over 20 years just preaching the book of Revelation. So I'm done with that. I ain't doing that no more. I don't think unless God tells me to. And I hope He don't. I have my life. A ministry. Then... As God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. So what did they say? God can save anybody, anywhere. They use the key word of all key words when it comes to salvation. There are many words. We're saved by grace. I understand that. Uh, we've got to believe in Christ. I understand that. But this is what the Bible says. Unless a man repents, he shall not enter into the kingdom of God. Now, we got to need to understand repentance. This is where people are going to miss it, and this is where people are not going to make it. They're going to get there, and they go go to the gate, Remember I preached to you on the Lamb's Book of Life Sunday night? Repentance is not being sorry that you did something wrong. Repentance is not being sorry because you got caught doing something you ought not be doing. Repentance is an action. Repentance means that you are sorry for what you've done. And you're going to turn your life in a different direction from where your life's been going. This is what repentance means. Repentance means to turn around and go in a different direction. To move toward Jesus. And so when they use that word, that God has granted them what? Repentance. That means what? That they were accepting the salvation of the Gentiles as being possible and as being done and it was fine. Peter, thank you for telling us this. Peter, thank you for helping us to recognize this truth that we've missed for so long. And I bet Peter walked out of there saying, wow, that wasn't what I expected. I expect them jokers to eat my lunch when I went there. And them jokers liked it. They liked it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for men that will stand. Father, thank you for men that will be bold for Jesus. No matter who we're talking to, no matter where we are, 
God, help us to realize that if we seek your face, that God, you will speak to us. God, just like preaching, you will give us the messages. Peter never knew. You see, that's the thing about it. We don't ever know how what we do this day is going to affect us in the days ahead. Peter never knew when he woke up from the vision and he went to the house of Cornelius. Never knew that he would stand before the Jewish leaders and speak a word to them that would change their life. God, help us to realize that every day there's going to be an opportunity. We need to be obedient to the call, whatever it is. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us tonight.